Hello everyone, my name is Christina Liu. I am a mental fitness coach. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's video where I share with you tips and tools on how to build mental fitness. This week, I would like to talk about a topic that I discussed in a podcast that I share with you earlier this week, which is about psychedelics. I know this is a little bit of a controversial topic. Maybe some of you haven't even heard of psychedelics or don't feel comfortable with it. And um, I'm here simply to share with you my experience and my view on how psychedelics can potentially help you to build your mental fitness, specifically by connecting more with your stage and by confronting and then weakening your saboteurs. So I am not here to promote any of these psychedelics that I'll be talking about. I'm simply here to share my experience. And for any of you who are interested to learn more or are curious and maybe you wanna try it yourself, I highly encourage you to read more about it. And I will share with you some resources that has been useful for me. And um, I highly encourage you to check it out for yourself. And then if you are interested to experience them, I would uh, say go find a facilitator, a guide, a coach, um, uh, or a, a practitioner that is experienced in this field that can guide you and, uh, and make sure that you have a good experience because the, the environment in which you do it and your own mindset, how you prepare for it, how you integrate it afterwards, it's all so important. So I'll talk about all, the, all of these aspects. So first of all, why do I wanna talk about psychedelics in the context of mental fitness? Because I believe that if you are ready, you are curious, and if you do it in the right way, psychedelics can help you to become more mentally fit by specifically connecting with your sage and then confronting your saboteur. At the same time, I do not believe that you have to take any psychedelics if you want to become mentally fit. Right. So by just by doing the, the techniques, the uh, practicing the theories that we've talked about here, um, such as um, looking at what your saboteurs are, catching them, labeling them and then doing PQ reps and shift to your stage and practice the sage powers. Just by doing that, you can absolutely become tremendously mentally fit, provided that you you continue to practice. Right. And, and there are, um, in fact, a lot of experienced meditators that when they um, did the brain scans and measuring their brain waves, they actually said these experienced meditators can get into a space that is very similar to the, the brain waves of people who are taking psychedelics. So there are certainly many other ways to achieve the same purpose as psychedelics, I believe. However, I also believe if you are curious and if you want to get deeper, you want to see how these substances could help you to get into that deeper state of consciousness, into that uh, or non-ordinary state of consciousness and how through that experience, you might be able to realize more and learn more or grow more. I say by all means, try it out, provided that you work with someone who is highly experienced and who can provide the safe space and who can help you to prepare for it, give you a good experience during it, and then also help you to integrate it afterwards, right? So that's my view. And uh, so in, in terms of, you know, first question you might ask, you know, for some of you is what is psychedelics? So psychedelics is basically a class of substance that both either can exist in nature, um, so exist in plants, or can be chemically made in the lab that can induce a non-ordinary state of consciousness. So this is a state of consciousness that is different from our usual waking state of consciousness. And from this place, what a lot of people find is that they can get to certain realizations, they can perhaps sometimes see certain visions that um, they can then use for their growth, for their learning and development. And um, a lot of people also find a lot of therapeutic benefits in using psychedelics to treat illnesses such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder or um, different types of addiction, right? So, so those are all possibilities from psychedelics, from this class of substance. 
So then you might ask also, you know, what are the categories of the psychedelics or what are the different types? So I would say there are probably the most common five, uh, there are commonly five, five different types of psychedelics. There may be more, but the most common ones, one is LSD. Um, this is made in the lab. And um, another one is called MDMA. Again, this is also made in the lab and the common name may be Molly or ecstasy. And then the third is called um, psilocybin mushrooms. Um, the common name may be ma magic mushrooms and this exists in nature. Um, and then fourth is DMT, which is this, the active compound. This is, can be a synthetic compound, but it's actually also a compound that's made in the body. So this is the only psychedelic active ingredient that, uh, is, that the body actually produces. And this also exists in nature in the plant called ayahuasca or this drink called ayahuasca. And, um, and then the fifth one is called uh, mescaline, is the active compound. And so this can be synthetically made in the lab, but also exists in nature in cactus, such as um, San Pedro and peyote. So these are kind of probably the most common types of psychedelics. And the ones that I've had experience with are the last two. So it's ayahuasca and San Pedro. And so I feel very privileged to have been able to experience them in the Amazon jungle in Peru, which is where uh, ayahuasca comes from. And then San Pedro, it, it doesn't come from the Amazon jungle, but it does come from another part of Peru in the mountains. And so in Peru, both of these substances are legal and it is safe to take it there, uh, or at least I had a very safe experience. And um, unfortunately, these substances are not legal in most countries right now, not in the US and a lot of other countries around the world. Uh, so in the US it's classified as a schedule one drug. So what that means is um, it's considered to be highly addictive and has no therapeutic benefits, which both of these views I do not agree with. And a lot of experts in the fields of psychedelics would agree uh, because first of all, I don't believe that it's highly addictive. And there is a lot of research that shows, uh, um, in fact, that uh, psychedelics are not addictive. And uh, there's one research that has been done on rats, lab rats, and you can argue, okay, rat, we're not rats, but, but I think it can give you some information, some idea about what these uh, psychedelics are. So in one test, um, they put the rat in a cage with food and cocaine. And so the rat took food, and cocaine once and after that continue to take cocaine every single time until they died and so you can probably see how cocaine can be highly addictive and probably doesn't really have a lot of um, therapeutic benefits and may not be good for you and and even then actually cocaine is considered a schedule two drug which means it's highly addictive but it has therapeutic benefits um so it it, it is actually used in some uh, medical situations um, for numbing purposes, right? So, so that's cocaine. And then they also did a test on um, food versus psychedelics. And I believe in this case, they used LSD or psilocybin mushroom. And so the rat got the food ones and then the, the, the psilocybin or the, the LSD ones and never went back to the psilocybin or the, 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 the LSD again. So that just shows you. And so that's why a lot of the experts in the field, they'll even say psychedelics are anti-addictive, which means, you know, you, you take it once, you don't really want to take it again. Um, and that's actually been my experience, um, especially with ayahuasca, because every single experience has been so intense and so difficult. Um, and then you might ask them, why, why do you take it? You know, if it's so difficult, well, because I believe it has all these benefits that it, it allowed me to to have such profound learnings and growth that it was uh, I saw the benefits as being outweighing the the intensity or the the discomfort of the experience during the ceremony. And uh, you know, there's actually a Chinese saying called Liang Yao Kuko. Um, and which means basically uh, any uh, 
uh, medicine is good if it tastes bitter to the mouth. And so, so in my case, you know, in the case of ayahuasca, it, it tastes very bitter. It, um, it doesn't taste very good at all. Um, and San Pedro as well. Um, so both of these definitely taste bitter to the mouth. And at the same time, the experience itself is also, it, it can be difficult. Although some people will have some very euphoric and very good experiences and that, that's also part of it, um, but, but it can be difficult. And so, so that's why I, I don't believe psychedelics are highly addictive. And then the second part about being a schedule one drug is that it is, it doesn't have any therapeutic benefits. And so I don't agree in this case at all as well. And uh, there's a lot of research again that shows the therapeutic benefits of these substances. So the very good news is that, uh, for example, MDMA, which is Molly or ecstasy, is now in stage three clinical trials to be approved by the FDA to treat post-traumatic stress disorder, so PTSD. And I believe LSD and psilocybin is also in clinical trials to be approved for depression and anxiety that is induced by cancer. And also there are a lot of anecdotal evidence for um, all these psychedelics, ayahuasca, for example, to treat depression, anxiety, PTSD, and uh, many types of, of addiction. And some of these research is still on small scale trial, just because there hasn't been a lot of funding that goes into this type of research. And so, um, but, but it's good news that we're starting to see more and more research in this field. And so, so, so that's about, um, you know, the psychedelics as a category of substance and, and kind of my view and some of the research that um, substantiates it. And, about my own experience. So why do I believe that psychedelics could help you to connect with your sage and uh, weaken or confront your saboteurs? Because I had exactly this experience, even though at the time that I experienced them, I didn't really have all the terminology and the concepts that I have introduced to you now. But when I look back on my experiences, that's exactly what I got. Specifically with ayahuasca, it allowed me to confront my saboteurs. And then at the time, I basically called in my fears. But really, what are saboteurs? At the essence of all saboteurs are fears, right? So, and so that's perhaps why my experiences with ayahuasca have been so difficult because, you know, you can imagine you sit there for four hours and you're not comfortable in your body and you're being shown all the, the, the worst fears in your life and you're having this. And then afterwards you're having to process it and reflect on it. So it, it, it's difficult, right? And so, so that was my ayahuasca experience. And then my San Pedro experience, on the other hand, it really gave me an opportunity to connect deeply with my sage. And again, at that time, I didn't have this vocabulary, but what I felt was intense amount of love, of empathy, of gratitude, of joy, and happiness, and just satisfaction, contentment, all these amazing feelings that come from the sage. And creativity too, because the first time I was on San Pedro, I actually had this idea out of this intense amount of love and gratitude and empathy, I said, well, why don't I do a retreat here and in incorporating these, um, these medicines that I have been taking with workshops, with coaching, with, you know, being in the jungle and experiencing nature and giving people this holistic experience of transformation of personal development and growth. So that's what came out of me, you know, having the experience with San Pedro. So, so that's why, and, and this is just, again, my experience. I'm not saying that everyone will have this experience because I have heard of people say that when they experience ayahuasca, they felt the most amount of love they have ever felt in their lives. So, you know, so that is possible that ayahuasca can help, can help you to connect with your sage. But in my experience, it's been mostly confronting my saboteurs. And San Pedro has been more about connecting with my sage. And so that's why these two experiences, and I've had multiple experiences with both of them, have been so profound and so valuable because I was able to experience it during the session or the ceremony. And then after that, to be able to process it and reflect it 
and, and, and really think about, okay, what does that mean? And how can I use that information and, and that experience to, to grow myself and develop myself to, to get, you know, to weaken some of my fears and to, to strengthen more my sage. And so that's been my experience. And so that's why I also say, you know, it's, it's not just, it's important. Yes. The, the, the ceremony or the experience with the psychedelic is important, but I would say the integration of the experience or the reflection and the processing of the experience afterwards, is almost just as important as the experience itself. And then there's another aspect of before you experience it, the preparation of it, I think can also be so important, you know, to read as much as you can about it, to talk to experts about it, to, to understand, you know, what you might expect so that you, you don't feel such a, um, such fear when you're in the experience. And then the experience itself, um, I also talked about before, make sure you find a practitioner, a facilitator, a guide that is experienced, that you feel safe with, that can give you a, a valuable experience. It may not always be a pleasant experience, but I believe it can always be a useful experience. And then the afterwards is so important. You know, talk to a coach, a, a shaman, a facilitator, you know, about your experience or at the least, you know, do reflection on yourself about what this experience means. What did I get out of it and how can I use it in my life to further my development, my learning and my growth? And so um, and that was what inspired me to buy my house in the Amazon jungle in Peru to turn it into a lodge and retreat center. Uh, which is to enable me to create this experience for people who want to experience this. So to do, to experience these medicines. So that's another name I give it, plant medicine, um, to experience these in a safe and beautiful environment and uh, with good preparation before and good integration after. And then during the experience, also experience the Amazon jungle and then the, the healthy food and doing yoga and meditation. So it all goes along with the experience. So, uh, and if you want to know more about uh, my experience, I talked about it in the podcast, so I'll link it again down below. Um, it's about an hour and I go into much more detail about both ayahuasca and San Pedro. And then the other is very exciting. I am coming out with a book about my experience traveling around the world for a year with remote year and I'm working and all my experiences. And so the plant medicine experience, my two trips to the jungle is also part of the book. So um, that's coming out. Hopefully it's, it's not certain yet, but uh, I'm shooting for June of this year and it's called the inside out journey. So I really hope that um, and I'll give you much more information later, but uh, just a heads up that is coming out in case you want to read more about it. And um, I also also link some resources down below. One really amazing book about the space of psychedelics is called How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. And um, I have a, a lot of respect for this author. He's been seven or eight times New York Times bestseller. He used to be a food writer. And then he got into, you know, got interested in psychedelics. And um, so wrote, in this book, wrote about the history of psychedelics, as well as his own experience with a lot of these psychedelics that we've talked about so far. So um, it's a very engaging read. It gives you a lot more information about what psychedelics are and their benefits if used in the proper way. So that's the big emphasis here is that it needs to be used in the proper way. So in How to Change Your Mind, Michael Pollan talks about set and setting. So set being your own mindset, going into the experience and setting being where you do it, the environment that you do it. And so both of these elements are so important. And I would also add the integration of it afterwards. It's so critically important. Um, yeah, so that, that's a fantastic book. And there is also a podcast with Michael Pollan, the author, and Tim Ferriss, which some of you might know. And he's just someone who is um, a huge proponent of psychedelics, but also someone who likes to experiment with different things and likes to do, you know, biohacking and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really good podcast. So I'll make both of these links below. 
So, well, thank you so much for joining me. And um, I would love to hear your comments and feedback. And again, if you are curious about it, please do more of your own research or reach out to me. We can have a chat about it. And I'll also link my retreat center down below because um, I am planning to do another retreat. I haven't been able to during this COVID environment, but I know things are opening up. So I'm planning to do a retreat in May, June timeframe. So I'll make that link down below as well. And uh, there's some more information about ayahuasca and San Pedro on my website also. Well, thank you so much. And um, I would love to hear your comments and feedback. And please give it a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification so you won't miss a video in the future. Thank you so much again. And I will talk to you next week. Bye now.